I'm doing my talk on uh, monitoring developers. This isn't Drupal specific, it's related to monitoring, but I hope that so someone takes something out of it. Three minutes is not a long time. Um, so I've had a bit to do with uh, monitoring politics in terms of h how to do uh, sort of dealing with the sysadmins and policy around monitoring. Where's my open office gone? <laughs> Here it is. Okay, so where we go? View. Slideshow, slideshow. Okay, we're going to have to race through it, obviously. It's so monitoring for developers. Uh, monitoring can mean sort of to look and to do a cacti type thing where you're paying attention and sort of doing graphs and having fun, all that sort of stuff. Monitoring can mean something's on fire, we're going to put it out. Okay, I'm talking about something going on fire. Monitoring in the world, my car, who thought it had monitoring? It had monitoring. What happens if the fuel light, if the fuel thing goes beep, beep? Put some fuel in it. What happens if the oil light goes on? Stop. I'll put oil in it, or is my wife treat the oil light as a decorative addition to the dashboard and keep driving? What, what happens if it starts making crunching noises when turning left? Take it to a mechanic. <laughs> Turn right. So what do we use? We use Nagios. Nagios, I'm not saying use Nagios, you can use whatever you want, but we use Nagios. Nagios is pretty good. Okay, so what's the qualities of a good test? The good test, a good test should never fail. The idea is you make tests that don't fail, guys, but when they do, what, you should actually have an escalation pass that's defined. Who actually gets paged? Quite an important thing, obviously. It should be documented what this person's supposed to do, and they are... Uh, the, the path that they take should be clear, and the path they take should be simple. It shouldn't require expert knowledge, and anyone should be able to do it. Well, any sysadmin who's got competency in, you know, with a system should pass the 3 a.m. the 3 a.m. test, as we call, which means someone at 3 a.m. sysadmin gets a page for a system they may never have been on, but they have access to, can make sense of your instructions, and actually do something with it. Okay, so some more, some more stuff, which is sort of bad. Some more tips is be careful monitoring systems. When you're the remote, uh, it's not always a good idea, and it's, it sort of shows how ropey the internet is, to be honest. Uh, don't monitor what you can't fix. You can't, it, there's no point in getting an alert that for something that you are not able to do anything about. It's not an informational alert about the weather. Um, you, just because you can monitor something doesn't mean you have to, which is, a, which is something you fall into when you set it up. Alert complacency is a big deal. Don't just ignore alerts. The aim is to not get alerts, not just look at the morning and think, oh, there's all these alerts, that's really nice. Uh, and another little wee tip that we found really good is monitor your HTTP SSL certs, even for your clients if you don't get them, and get a nice warning three months, uh, like a month and ahead that this certificate's about to expire, and you go, hey, you guys need to get a new certificate. Makes you look really good and organized. Well, uh, good, and I won. I thought I, thought I was going to run out of time. So, very good. Jake. Jake's going to be talking on puff smoking hippies. Your time starts now. Did I misread it? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, give me two seconds. I mean, come on. Okay, that's... No, no. Okay, that's really bad resolution, but I don't really have time, enough time to do anything else. So, uh, basically, I'm going to give a quick talk about uh, the Queensland Greens website, which looks much better at a more normal resolution. Anyway, um, basically, uh, as a grassroots organisation with limited funds, we were looking for a particularly good way to coordinate all of our supporters, our members, and any other things we need to do with regards to campaigns, general information, and thank you very much, <laughs> sir. Um, anyway, so one of the things I would go through is up in Queensland, we are actually having an election in the next month or so. And so one of the things I want to show you just as a general case study is how we're integrating social media into our campaigning. So. <laughs> Here it is. You have Twitter profiles, Facebook posts, etc. Yes, I know that's me. Please ignore that. Um, we also have policies. That's great. You know, I don't think anyone else's website has that. I haven't found it yet anyway. And the coup de grace, uh, we have an election management system. Now, I won't be showing any information on that for privacy reasons. However, uh, people who volunteer to help out with us in any way, shape or form, uh, previously we had paper-based systems that were really crap. People lost stuff and things weren't maintained from election to election. So uh, some really smart guys that didn't include me uh, built an election management system. And basically, if anyone wants to help out or become a member or anything like that, we can store it in this database. Um, it is across all of the states. And because we're using a Drupal multi-site configuration, we can essentially uh, spread, the, uh, spread the resources between various independent state bodies in a way that retains their independence whilst allowing us to uh, well, work together where possible. So things like theming are very similar across the states. 
And basically, it's all a hell of a lot better than the Plone system we had before. So that's pretty much it. Um, and I think we have 40 seconds for a question. <laughs> 30 seconds, come on. Oh, yeah, we're not actually in favour of legalising marijuana. I really just said that so I get people to, uh, you know, listen. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, question. Yes, it is. Come on, another... There's, how does he keep, there's a database, people enter it, Ten. Um, and we have backups. Um. <laughs> okay, thank you. If Chris Burgess is in the room, please come to the front. Next up we have Simon Pascal talking about open source font design. My pleasure. No, you can't have extra time. Please don't invert it. Awesome. There we go. Start at the start because it's a very good place to start. Okay, cool. Um, sorry. Who here um, has paid for fonts of some kind? Who here is willing to? Uh, sorry. Who here has paid more than? hundred dollars for a font. Two hundred dollars. Three hundred. Four hundred. Five hundred dollars for a font. Anyone more than that? Hands went down pretty fast. All right, cool. So um, I went through a typography port talk just recently, so I won't bother you with any of this crap. Production of type. Who here is familiar with how type is produced? How fonts are made? Small number of you. Awesome. Cool. So really, it starts with sketches, then it goes into transferring it into a digital medium, then it's tons and tons of uh, fine-tuning, which takes forever, up to a year. Um, state of digital type, there are thousands and thousands of fonts. They're all crap. Many are crap, at least. <laughs> There's a huge lack of quality of free fonts, and most of the fonts that you can get are licensed for lots and lots of money, and there's a very traditional industry behind it. Free type, there's a bunch. I'll just run through them quickly. You might be familiar with a bunch of them. Many are copies, and there's little stylistic variation. So there's a tall, uh, call to type designers that I want to put out here. Um, this got posted on typeofile.com, which is like the site on the internet for all type nerds to congregate and wank about typography. <laughs> I am one of them. Um, that was met with instant cynicism. I'm not sure if you got to read that last paragraph, but it was basically just join, help us, do something. We give you tons of free software, so please. The cynicism was stuff like this. These are some direct quotes, by the way. Ten. Thank you. Next up, we have Chris Burgess talking about Zipcart. Is Chris in the room? Is Chris in the building? Next, yes, quick. It's a very fast. Is it yours? Which one? Is it your laptop? No. No. Sorry, I thought I was number eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Zipcart is a very little module, which, uh, microphone. microphone, it's a little module that we put together for a media gallery, um, we wanted some press folks to be able to grab some images, one, oh, there's a little animation going on there, I don't know, if it, it would be nice if you could see and then you can grab a zip of those files. Another animation. That's all. It's called Zipcart. <laughs> Question? 
two minutes of questions. <laughs> oh, he's <yeah>, serious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey? uh, yeah, it's, it's, there isn't a, they wanted zip, so that's what it has at the moment, but it's, um, it, it's got a swappable archive back end, so Patch is welcome for tables, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Next up we have Sean Moss on DrupalFinder.com. Hello. I posted this on, on GDO a couple of weeks ago, so you may have already seen it. That kind of scale? Yeah. So yeah, anyway, I always wanted to write a web crawler, but never did. And then um, um, I think it was Owen Lansbury posted on GDO um, a couple of months ago, um, which Australian universities are running Drupal? I thought, I want to know that too. Here's my chance to write a web crawler. So um, I decided to write one that, that finds, that just, just lists hosts instead of a, a search engine which gets every single page. I just wanted to get hosts and find out if they're running Drupal or not. So um, I created this. It's not a massively complex site in any way. It represents about a week of solid work. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the fields there. You can search by a keyword. You can search by scheme. Um, being uh, HTTP or HTTPS. Um, you can search by host, ends with or begins with or contains. You can search by uh, the country where it's hosted and if it's Drupal or not and uh, what version. So for example, if, if you want to find Australian universities that uh, are running Drupal, you can go ends with .au. It's slow. It's running on HostGator in, in the States, a shared host, like it's slow as a dog. I'm, uh, this isn't a Drupal site, by the way, so please don't stone me or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> when I first built it, it was like two files, a cron job and a search page, so I didn't see the need for it, but actually, now it's evolved a bit. We, we probably are going to make it, well, definitely are going to make it a Drupal site. Does so that anyway, make it a recursive problem? Sorry? Does that make it a recursive problem? It keeps finding itself, yeah. So okay, so we've found it, so far it's found 122 um, .edu.au sites running Drupal. So this is pretty, can be pretty useful if you're curious about things like who's using Drupal. This can be a way to find them. Um, if you wanted to find just .edu sites to be, to include the United States, for example, you could do something like contains .edu, which would pick up .edu sites uh, all over the world. And hopefully, it will find uh, more. Sorry, it is really slow. <laughs> so, okay, it's, it's actually found nearly 1,000 um, .edu sites. So that's Australian, American universities everywhere running Drupal, which is pretty good. And you can use it for things like, you know, finding uh, if China is, is running much Drupal. Ten. Which you'll find. Oh, really? Already? Okay, so... <laughs> um, Five. I'll just show the four, stats page then. Three, two... <laughs> About One. two percent. Thank you very much. Five. Next up, we've got Raina talking about the N word. They all did. <laughs> hey, everyone. Oh my God, thank you. Oh, get in. What am I doing wrong? Wrong way around. I'm doing it the wrong way around. I saw a great cartoon the other day. USB sticks. You stick it in. If it doesn't work, you turn around. If it still doesn't work, you turn around again. That's what you do. <laughs> Good eye. How's that looking? Yes, yeah, so my talk is about the horrible N-word. It's a very unhappy word indeed. Do you know what word I'm thinking of? See if you can think of it. I used to work at a place called SitePoint. They publish the happiest tech books on earth, in my humble opinion. And I'll tell you why that is. They're clever, they're funny, and they're super positive because they have eliminated a nasty, nasty word. And that word is the N-word. Do you know what other sorts of words that they avoid using? Lots of words like this. What have they all got in common? They're all negative, negative words. Even if you are trying to say something positive by using one of these negative words, you still get this nasty, nasty tone. So my tip to you today is whenever you're trying to do something, it's my one favourite web content tip, try and eliminate your negative words. 
replace them with positive rephrasings. And here are some examples. You'll see how your tone improves. I've never done a lightning talk before. Not very confident. This is my first lightning talk. Yay! <laughs> there are no more spots on our list. Oh, no. Hey, all the spots on our list have been taken. Great. You shouldn't have a problem with that. That's still positive, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think you'll find this easy. It's even better still. Good to see that discussion wasn't in vain. Even better yet, good to see that conversation was worthwhile. PHP doesn't support herpy-derps, so you can't use it. <laughs> PHP lacks support for herpy-derps. Try not to make noise while someone is speaking, guys. Try to avoid making noise while someone is speaking. Still not the happiest thing, but really lifts that tone. Seriously, give it a go. There's no place that this doesn't work. Try blogs, emails, Twitter, even your talks. Try a lightning talk of your own if you like. Instead of saying you won't be disappointed, I'll say this. You'll be pleasantly surprised. See ya. Next up we have Amy Marie talking on Help Me Help You to Learn. <laughs> Good to know. See if it's going to actually pick it up in time. Probably not. Damn. Okay, so basically, I'm going to try this again really quickly. What this talk is about is help, help me help you to learn. Um, I really would like some slides at this, but if I can't, I will just read them out. I will never give up my Linux box, sorry. I've had it since I was 15. <laughs> um, all right, so you're not going to get slides. That's okay. We'll do this open source way. Help me help you to learn. Okay, what's the biggest problem that we have in the Drupal community at the moment? Lack of talent. Okay, we have a big lack of talent. That is a major problem. And we're also looking to employ people if you want a job, but I'm sure you've probably already got them, as most do. So the hardest, so the hardest thing that um, we face is lack of talent. Preaching to the converted. I can go to a Drupal camp, and I can go to a Drupal con, and I can go to user groups, and I'm talking to a like-minded audience who understand my language. It's nice. It's all comfy. But I'm still preaching to the converted. So what I'm suggesting is that we actually get out there, and rather than just talking to the converted, we start spreading the Drupal source. So we go to bar camps, we go to non-specific um, user groups, we go to technology conferences, we go to code camps, we talk to business and social innovation meetups, etc., and we start spreading the Drupal word to get more people involved. Because um, preaching to the converted is great, but you know we need to get more people involved. Um, how newbies? We need newbies. Newbies are cool. Okay, noobs are cool. Um, noobs are keen to learn. They might feel intimidated to contribute. Drupal has a pretty steep learning curve um, and they face a lot of barriers. So anybody that you know that's new, help them out. How can we help out? Well, we can be nice. That's always a great start. We cannot humiliate somebody. We remember when you first learnt Drupal? It was pretty scary, some of it was intimidating. Put yourself in um, that person's shoes. Don't judge somebody by what they do. Don't label somebody a developer or a FEMA or that person can't do that, etc. cetera. Um, let a person decide what they can and can't do and who they are. Don't type cast people. And really, unless you're hacking a kernel, I don't really think you should think you're a, an elitist. And I think an elitist attitude just pisses people off. Sorry about that, I got completely distracted. <laughs> and start a learning user group. So Next up, we have Thomas Sutton talking about Perth, Western Australian Drupal peeps. Okay. Your time starts now, and this time I'll be slightly more on the ball. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's Australia. Um, that's Western Australia. They're just for those of you who uh, need some pointers, it's part of Australia. Um, <laughs> There's Drupal there. If you're not already part of the community, you probably should be. We just started a Twitter account, um, groups.drupal.org slash Australia. Meetups, um, 
if you are a person from Western Australia or have been a person from Western Australia or know a person from Western Australia or visit Western Australia, please see if there's a meetup on because um, I'm getting sick of talking to myself. Um, <laughs> so come. Next up, we have Dries talking on update on the Drupal Association. Your time starts now. So, I didn't prepare because they only just asked me two minutes ago, or 15 minutes ago, to give a presentation. So, I wanted to give you a quick update on the Drupal Association. It's the nonprofit organization behind Drupal, which we organize Drupal cons, we host the websites, all of these things. So, I started the Drupal Association back in 2005. And I started it because we had a big server meltdown, and I needed to raise money. Um, to buy a new server. And so I put up a PayPal button, pretty empty page, replaced it at all with this empty page with a PayPal button. And within 24 hours, people chipped in $10,000 in PayPal. And so I freaked out, because I'd never had $10,000. <laughs> and I changed the password of PayPal to be like, this long. <laughs> anyway, but I also realized that I needed to do something. And so I started the Drupal Association to have a checking account. Uh, fast forward six years, 2011 was a very big year for the Drupal Association, and we've effectively rebooted the Drupal Association, meaning we went from a working board, where the board members actually did all of the work, to a policy board, where we set the tone and the vision and the strategy, and we work with committees to help drive the change. We also hired eight uh, employees, so we now have actual staff to help with fundraising, uh, to help with the website, to help organize events and all of these things. So big, big change. Uh, we moved the Drupal Association from Belgium to the US, and we moved the people from New York to Portland. So we now have an office in Portland where we have a bunch of people. Um, so if you want to get involved with the Drupal Association, there is effectively two ways. One, you can give us money. Um, as individuals, you can give us 22 euros. I don't know how much you know um, Australian dollars that may be, but it's not a lot. <laughs> And as organizations, you can give us $72 uh, euros, sorry. And we'll use that m money to pay for the people, uh, to fund improvements to DDO and so forth. Um, let's see what else. Um, so we just had a meeting in uh, Chicago, and I can keep talking, by the way. <laughs> we just had a big meeting in Chicago with the Drupal Association board, and we strategized on what we should focus on in 2012, so this year. Um, and we've come up with two big topics. Um, one, we want to fix and Amy may like this, we're, we want to help fix the, um, the talent issue, right? So we're going to do all sorts of initiatives to get students involved in Drupal and all of these things. And secondly, we've decided that we want to make DDoDo the Walhalla for developers. So we're going to look at Git, GitHub and you know, places like this and try to you know, move over some of these ideas into DDoDo and make another big investment. So please get involved, either give us money or give us some of your time and resources, and we can work together and on making DDoDo the best possible place for all of us to live. So, thank you. Next up, we have Andrew talking about Asaya. I have no slides, it's relatively simple. Some of you are involved in companies that work with open source products. Some of you build solutions built around open source. Some of you probably work with Drupal. Um, there's an industry body which uh, represents those people. It does things like occasionally petitions government. Um, but more often than that, it gives you a, an opportunity to meet with other people that are involved in uh, open source and the business of doing open source. So if you're running a company uh, and you're interested in open source, if you're someone that uses open source and uh, kinds of, kind of uses it to make money, uh, you can go to Open Source Industry Australia, so that's osia.com.au and have a look. It's pretty cheap to join. Um, the society had a rebirth last year. Um, it was almost dead, and if you know uh, OSIA from two years ago when we tried to close it, uh, it's completely different. Um, so uh, give it another go, have a look, and that's all I've got to say. Thanks. Bye. Next up, we have Trindy talking about what is a virtual assistant. Your time starts now. Hi, this is my first lightning talk. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Number two, I'm a noob. Woo! <laughs> um, I don't actually have a technical talk. Surprise, surprise. But what I do have is... What? Okay. Uh, what I do have is I'm a virtual assistant. Now, how many here enjoy bookwork? Bookkeeping? Boo, 
What about what about um, managing your social media, writing blogs? You actually enjoy that? Do you have the time to do it? Or right, that's where people like me come in. We are also fantastic at repurposing your work. A lot of you do talks at conferences and meetings and have it audio or visually recorded. I can actually transcribe that information which you can reuse um, as content on your websites or as brochures. Basically, that's... Yes, there you go. Or as accessibility for your videos. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, there is a massive network of people like me out there. If you go to vadirectory.net, um, there is a huge list. I'm a member of that group. Um, yeah, we're hugely reliable. We're able to work remotely. We don't actually uh, do on-site work. And I think that's about it. Very all over the place. <laughs> If you have any other questions, feel free to come and speak to me later. All right. Thank you. Next up, we have Gordon talking about e-commerce. Your time starts now. Uh, g'day, everyone. Um, I don't have any slides. Um, I just got asked a few minutes ago as well. Um, e-commerce uh, is not dead. We're still plotting away with the original e-commerce module and building it up. Uh, we're currently in the process of porting to Drupal 7 and I'm just about ready to do an alpha. I have everything done except, a, uh, except for one test, which is currently failing, but we'll do it. On the word of tests, testing, tests in Drupal 7 are excellent. It has shortened my conversion time from six to seven so much. It's not like, it's not, uh, it's surprising on how much it does. Thanks, Drees, for making sure that was put in. Um, the, so we're going to be working on that. I've got other things that are uh, on the pipeline for e-commerce, so we're going to be uh, making it better and better and hopefully get back to the standing that it used to be. Thanks. Next up, we have Brenda talking about why I love my Mac. I don't have any slides either because I just got asked 10 minutes ago. I bought a Mac six months ago. Why did I buy a Mac? Because I went to Drupal down under last year and everyone else had a Mac, so I thought I'd better buy one. So I bought one. <laughs> How did I know what to buy? I went to the Apple store and said, what do I buy? And of course they wanted to sell me a million dollars worth of stuff, but anyway, I ended up with this little u MacBook Pro. I love it now. Why do I love it? Am I happy? Yes, I'm happy. I can have heaps of programs running at the same time. I can install Windows and still run my uh, under Parallels and still run, run all my Windows programs that I need to on top. It goes to sleep and it wakes up really well. Um, I only reboot it about once a week. I don't know whether I should do it more than that, but that's fine. So I can use my two fingers and three fingers really well now. Um, it's got more battery mem memory than my PC had. It's faster to boot, faster to wake up. Um, I can take it anywhere with me, of course. Um, I've used it, I used it all day yesterday, charged it last night, used it all day today. I couldn't have done with that with my PC. Um, I just want to say thank you to the organisers for this weekend, to the sponsors. Speakers, to the hotel people, that's my bit. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, Kim is talking about the Adelaide User Group. Your time starts now. Hello. Uh, I have no slides. Oh, wait, no negatives. Um, imagine a map of Australia. Imagine a map of South Australia. Imagine Adelaide. Um, there, appears, there appears to be no user group there. Um, so if you would like one, and if you're from Adelaide, come and talk to me. We'll, uh, we'll make that happen. I think that, that wins the prize for the shortest lightning talk. Josh is talking about Linux Australia. Your Thank time has already started. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kim's going to do me a favour, but while I do that, while he does that, I'm going to just tell you quickly what Linux Australia is. Hopefully what most people know, um, we've got an organisation in Australia. We basically exist to support open source and that takes many different views. Uh, the main things that we do are, is around conferences. Uh, the Drupal conference is one of those, uh, so we support Drupal conference by giving them bank account, seed funding, insurance and everything like that. Uh, we do other conferences as well, but uh, we support bar camps and software freedom days and lots of things. But uh, I'm not actually here to talk about Linux Australia because I'm hoping you know, and if you don't know, go to linux.org.au and learn about it there. It's a Drupal site. Um, the actual reason I'm here is to call the organisers to the stage. I'd like to call Peter and Donna 
and Brian and Jane up the front, please. Um, so, you see, my, my, ne my next challenge here is to see if I can go over time and make them not stop me. But I, I, and I might need to like call Ben in. I know, I'm, I'm, I'm watching it. Already. Come on. Yeah. it. It takes a lot of work to organize a conference. Uh, everything Linux Australia does, the, the council uh, and the people who run the conferences and everything else are all volunteers. These guys put in a tremendous amount of work to make this conference happen. It is no easy feat and I think they deserve a huge round of applause. We, we also have uh, gift cards, uh, $100 for all the organisers to spend on Amazon, and I will give those to you a bit later. So, thank you. <laughs> I had time left. Damn, I didn't get to kick you off. Um, you got the next Prizes. bit. Uh, prizes and the other people who are doing this next. I think lightning talks are done. Hands up for all the awesome lightning talks. <laughs> <laughs>